right. We're back. Another great edition of uh, Between the Pipes with uh, myself, Chad Schneider, and my co-host, Cam. And uh, we've got a good show tonight. Tonight we're going to be talking to uh, athlete reps. Most of you may not know this, but uh, we have two athlete representatives at the CBF level. Uh, they are part of the executive or come to the executive meetings and they sit on the board and help us make decisions. And they're supposed to bring forth the opinions of the athletes and bring them to the executive to help uh, either say yay or nay to some of the decisions that are made at that table. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to Cam to send out some lengthy introductions. Yeah. So first off, we've got Chloe Perrault. She's our uh, female and French representative from Quebec. She has won championships at many levels. And also joining us is Brad Lechner. He's our male and English athlete representative from Saskatchewan. He's uh, played at the elite level for many years. Uh, so they're both definitely involved in the sport. Let's see if we can get them involved into our podcast here. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hi. Awesome. We got audio. We're off to the good start. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining the podcast and, and thanks for saying yes. <laughs> um, as you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen a couple. Hopefully you have. If not, shame on you. Um, but as you well know, we ask you guys a bunch of questions. We kind of go back and forth, asking you guys each the same question. Sometimes questions are directed to one individual and we carry on so without further ado i'll start off with the questions and as always ladies first so chloe you're first up tell us a little bit about yourself and and how you got into broomball and and what makes it exciting for you um i'm playing broomball since i'm like uh, 12 years old uh, my parents were, was playing broomball uh so my mother introduced uh, my soccer team uh, to broomball and um it was just like one day like that and uh we really enjoyed that sport so we continue uh, playing uh, in the juvenile category so um it's a uh, it's uh, on this way that I start uh, the, to play broomball uh, here at 12 years old. It was uh, a, a really nice passion for me uh, since I'm, I'm really young. So. Awesome. Cool. Super. Ready? Yeah, I started playing broomball in Belgoni probably around 13, 14, something like that. Uh, playing in the Bantam and Midget and Juvenile categories in Belgoni. Um, I started playing, I grew up watching uncles play. We we're at the rink as kids watching and then ultimately following my cousins to play the sport that I now love and enjoy. Um, junior is definitely busy playing on multiple teams, mixed teams, men's teams, and then your junior team. But something that we grew to enjoy in our teens and then now into our some of us into our adult years and it's been some of my most memorable years for sure nice now chloe i got a question for you uh can you tell us what the role of an athlete representative is at the cbf because until this podcast i didn't know that there was any players i thought it was just all retired guys that were just yelling at each other in a room but uh, apparently we've got some players in there so what do you guys do what's your role so um, as an athlete uh, rep, we are there to, um, to hear the opinion of uh, and the needs of the broomball players. So we participate uh, to all the broomball meeting, uh, broomball Canada meeting, so we can um, understand the decision of broomball Canada. Um, and also we can voice our needs as athlete uh, in those uh, meetings. So um, we will also be part of the national juvenile championship and the national senior championship. So we want to grow our sports because we like it. So uh, we are there to, um, to like uh, improve our sports. Very nice. So you're saying if there's a rule that I don't like, I can yell at you guys and you guys can yell at CDF for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
that's kind of the gist of it, right? They'll be going around <laughs> the tournaments and, and, and getting feedback from the players and bringing up any, uh, any issues or any concerns at the player level towards up to the CBF level. So it's, Perfect. it's, it's not a new, um, it's not a new position, but hopefully we can utilize it a little bit better. That's for sure. So Brady questions directed at you. Um, so how did you both get elected to those positions? And what was the process to become an athlete representative? So I believe CBF had just kind of posted something on all their socials, gauging interest if, if anyone was interested in being becoming an athlete's representative. And then I think there was about, I don't know the exact number, I think there was around 10 of us that had 10 athletes that had put our names forward towards the CBF and just kind of explained why we thought we'd be good in the position and why we wanted the position. And then from there, there was uh, all the athletes who were put their name forward to be a representative. We're all in a Zoom call with uh, each province and territory had to get two athletes to sit in on the call to make a vote at the end. And then in the Zoom meeting, each rep each athlete said their little piece of why they wanted the position, why they thought it'd be a good fit for them. And then from there, at the end of the Zoom meeting, they kind of, all the athletes that wanted in were uh, taken out of the Zoom meeting temporarily and then they voted. And then we came back in and then there's when, I believe it was Pascal kind of gave us the, the lowdown of who got the most votes. And yeah, that's how we both got selected. Nice, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't I didn't I missed that I missed that on the social medias I probably would have found something else for me to do I would have put you gone gone to head to head with you on that but I missed it <laughs> so Chloe I got a question for you apparently you're a nutritionist that is cool um do you think the the knowledge of that you have as a nutritionist uh is an advantage to you as a player um, for sure, I think uh, my profession of uh, nutritionist helped me a lot uh, uh, in my personal life, but also with my sports performance. Uh, I like to uh, introduce uh, healthy food every day in my place uh, to feel better, but also to train better um, because healthy food gives me a lot of energy uh, to train each day, each week. Uh, also in competition, it's always easier for me to uh, plan my meal and snacks, um, so to get more energy for uh, all the games. Um, I also know exactly what I need to eat to be comfortable uh, in my training or in my game. So um, yeah, for me, it's easier. So by adopting a balanced um, daily diet, um, I ensure that I have all the essential nutrient in my daily life. So I feel better and it's easier for me to compete and to get good, uh, good personal result. I try. <laughs> nice. Now, do you have any go-to snacks before the games? Like, is there anything that's helping you become a better player right before? Is it a bagel or a chocolate milk or something crazy? <laughs> uh, for me, it's a um, typical breakfast of um, toast with peanut butter and banana. <laughs> Nothing fancy, eh? <laughs> Nothing Start too fancy. A, a good tournament. It's a, that breakfast that you need to eat for me. Nice. <laughs> That's good. And then, and like you said, everyone's a little different, and nutrition is a big part of it. Brady, are are you on that level as well? You know, with with your nutrition and training for for tournaments as well. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so next question for Brady. So the the 2022 Senior Nationals that were originally supposed to be held in 2020 in Saskatoon are we're looking to set place in April. It's a go. Hopefully we can keep going. But how is the COVID situation in the province? And do you think we'll be able to go forward with the event? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the issue with COVID right now. We don't know what's going to, what the months ahead are going to bring us. Um, right now, things are trending in the right direction, I would think, to successfully pull off the tournament. Um, but I think as we know how last couple of years have went, it's kind of been up in the air. It could change in a month, it could change in two weeks, but we're definitely looking forward to 
finally getting to host the event in Saskatoon that was supposed to be in 2020. Um, and yeah, I, it'll all depend, but right now I think everything's looking good, good to go forward with the event and hopefully we can pull off a good event. Well, that's good to hear. I really hope it goes forward for everybody I know around here that's been waiting to play. Same with junior nationals and provincials and everything. So the more tournaments, the better. I mean, I haven't, there haven't been any tournaments here in Ontario yet, but I've been to two in Quebec already. Uh, asbestos was just la two weeks ago or last weekend. Anyways, there's been some good tournaments out in Quebec at least. Chloe, have you been to any of those yet? Yep. Yeah, I, I did like two two tournaments in Saint Pierre de Bec and uh, Asbestos too. Okay. Yeah, I was I was at both those two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so we're super hopeful that we're able to host that again, in, like in Saskatchewan. It's looking pretty good, other than the fact that we've you know that new variant came out. Hopefully, it's nothing major, right? It's not going to shut anything down. But like you said, there's up and ups and downs, right? We think we're on a, a trending to go in the right way, and then all of a sudden we get handcuffed and we have to put some other measures in place, but we're hoping by that time, the, the vaccination numbers are up high enough that we're going to be fine. So. Fingers crossed, eh? That's yep. it. All right, Chloe, another question for you. I need you to tell us what deck ball is. It's a program you guys started in Quebec over the summer. How'd you guys come up with it? What is it? Uh, and is it fun? <laughs> So um, initially, we introduced uh, minor players uh, to broomball on the hockey surface uh, because we didn't have um, access to an arena. So we started uh, with the minors like uh, three years ago. We were playing um, deck ball uh, like for fun with the kids. Um, so we need to know that in Quebec, there's many uh, deck hockey. Uh, so it's really popular in Quebec, the, the sports at deck hockey. Um, so uh, there's many surfaces. Uh, so uh, some player of the Amigo and Room Shack uh, started to play deck ball uh, this summer for fun uh, during uh, all the summer because we were missing a lot of room ball. We didn't have access to an arena uh, in the winter season because of uh, COVID-19. So uh, we started uh, like in, uh, in May um, playing um, deck ball and we really enjoy it. Uh, so um, we, we uh, the Federation, Quebec Federation, uh, uh, planned a deck ball tournament at the end of the summer. Um, so there was about 15 uh, women and co-ed team. Um, so it was really nice. It was uh, on one day, um, some deck hockey player uh, tried deck ball at this tournament. So uh, they really enjoyed that sport. So uh, now they decided to play broom ball this winter. So that's really nice because uh, we have um, some new athletes in the, our broom ball league. Um, and as a coach, um, I finally start uh, to the broom ball season with uh, the kids uh, on the um, deck hockey surfaces. So uh, we, uh, we, we start, I think, in September. Yeah, in September, we, we start the deck ball. And after we continue the season, we started on the ice on November. So I think it's a good idea to start the season after when we have the uh, the, um, the arena, it's nice, it's nice to, uh, to go on the ice after and uh, the kids really like it, but also um, the new athlete that, uh, that we find uh, really like it too. Nice. So is there any, did you guys get any pictures or videos of it? Because uh, yeah. I would like, I'd like to see it. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, some uh, videos on uh, the Quebec Federation uh, Facebook. Um, so um, there's many pictures also. Uh, so I think there's a, um, a, an album of this, uh, of this weekend, uh, of this tournament of Dag Ball. So yeah, uh, we really enjoy that sport because it's outside also. So we, we enjoy the sun and uh, we really, really like it. Also, uh, Knapper DJL uh, did a, a ball uh, for this uh, surfaces. So um, 
it was really nice with this ball because the other ball uh, grip on the surfaces. So it was not really nice, but uh, the ball that Mapper Digel um, did was uh, perfect for us to play and uh, to have uh, fun. And do you know- Oh, wow, the, that's awesome. Yeah. And are they going to be able to give that ball to other places if they want to try doing this deck ball? Like you can uh, I'm order sure, it online? I'm sure. It was new um, of this summer because the Quebec Federation asked them to to do uh, this um, this kind of ball, but I think it uh, it could be uh, it, it could be for uh, other province or uh, it could be nice. Do you have deck hockey wow. surfaces in yeah. your uh, in Saskatchewan? Um, well, we've got yeah, like we use pretty much the rinks right yeah. on the cement, so. Um, they play the ball hockey, right? So we'd be able to do it as well, I think, in those surfaces. So, yeah, that's actually because uh, for my, I coach two juvenile team, teams, and we usually do dry land, dry land training, so just exercising in a gym. But I'm sure we'd be able to do some drills uh, with a deck ball that actually like slides on the on the surface rather than get stuck on it. So that's huge that they made a ball for that. So it is. It's fantastic, actually. Uh, you know what? We could. I don't know if Vero shared any of that on the CBF Facebook page or not, but if we haven't, I'm going to definitely ask her to do so. Yeah, I'm going to buy a couple of balls as soon as I, <laughs> I'm going to message DJ tomorrow. I'll be like, I need some of these deck yeah. balls. So. <laughs> yeah, no. So we're getting close to the end with our questions, guys. Only a couple more, but there's one question we always ask all our guests, and I hope you've thought long and hard on this one. So I start with Chloe first. So I'll go to Brady first on this one, you know. What is your best broomball memory? And obviously we've had answers that don't just have one. You can have more than one, but there's got to be a few that rank up there pretty high. Yeah, I think, and you want me to go first or Cole yep. go first? Yep. Uh, my best memory that sticks out the most would be winning juvenile nationals at home in Belgoni in 2010, playing with my cousin, of course, and just having it at home definitely makes it stand out more than any of the other memories that I have for sure. Yeah. Home crowd is unreal. That's a good one. Chloe? Um, for my part, I think it's uh, uh, when we won the, the world championship in uh, 2018 uh, in Minnesota, so it was uh, my first gold medal in the women's uh, category. Uh, I didn't um, won, I didn't win anything uh, in juvenile, so any gold medal, I just uh, win a silver medal. For me, it was really nice to to win um, a gold medal with uh, with my friends and uh, uh, the girls that I play with them uh, since uh, many years. Yes. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing you went to that uh, Worlds because who knows when the next one's going to be, hopefully sooner yeah. rather than later, but uh, that, was a, that was a good tournament for sure. So if athletes have concerns they want brought to the CBF and they want you guys to bring those forward, how would they go about contacting you guys? Brady, how, how can we send you a message? Are you on Facebook, email? What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, I think on the CBF website, they have our... Uh, names and information on there I believe it's just our email I believe that there might be a phone number I'm not sure but yeah just from there if you guys have any athletes have any comments or questions or concerns you can definitely reach out to us and we'd be happy to get answers for you or bring stuff to the board's attention that you guys think should be brought forward but I know me and Chloe both will do anything we can to help you guys Nice. Chloe, that's where your information is too. It's all on the CBF website. Yeah, for sure. For me, it's same thing as Brady, but uh, it will be a pleasure for us to receive some questions or opinions on different subjects. So uh, uh, we'll do our best to give an answer as soon as possible and uh, to ask uh, at the, the next meeting, uh, Broomball Canada meeting. So we are there for this and um, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like uh, the, uh, with today's technology social media all the platforms we got it's so easy now to get an answer or anything you need right or if you have an idea like the best thing is people come up with these great ideas and they don't go anywhere because they don't 
to bring them forward, right? So bring all your great ideas forward. Hopefully we can put them into action and, and grow our sport. Like we just need to find yeah. ways to, to grow our sport and get it more and get more people involved and, and get it booming. Yeah, we need somebody that works at TSN to get us a TV deal or something. That that would be ideal. But <laughs> so uh, we got some extra time here, so uh, I'm going to ask you guys just a couple questions about uh, about broomball in your area. So Brady, are you guys playing full time there yet? Are you guys in? Got your league running? Like, are you guys allowed on the ice in Saskatchewan? How's yeah, it going? Yeah, we're there? we're we just started our men's league in Regina. Well, we play out of Odessa here, but it's Regina men's league. We started last week. And then now it'll be pretty much full bore until provincial time, basically, which is start of March, I believe. Um, I know there's a mixed league in Saskatoon that's running right now, as well as Regina. Um, everyone itching to kind of get back on the ice and doing something a little more normal than working from home, sitting at home, whatever everyone is doing. Um, and I know our, our uh, younger age categories Chad can agree that they're all doing very well in the province right now too. Um, yeah, we just got to keep keep working to try and get into some of these other communities and get some more people playing around here and keep it going. Awesome, yep. and I'm sure I'm sure a couple of the guys and girls that are going to nationals will have some questions. How are the arenas right now? Like, are they kicking you out after ten minutes? Are you allowed to shower and stuff like that? What's the situation there? No. Um, Compared to last year, obviously you didn't play football, ball, but playing hockey, they had rules like that in place. But this year, it seems to be pretty normal with the rinks. Other than nice, our province has the masking mandates. Um, other than yeah. that, it's it's pretty normal. It's it's been a nice year so far. That's a good answer, Brady. How about you, Chloe? What's it like out in your area? I mean, I, I know the tournaments were great, like beers in the stands and everything. I was like, oh, this is, it felt so normal. It was great. Uh, but you guys got leagues going and it's normal like that? Yeah, everything's normal for us. Um, there's many leagues uh, that that are um, that started like in September, I think. Uh, so for us, it's a uh, normal life. Um, we are very um, happy to, to have some tournament also. Uh, I know yeah. that the... Um, the minors league uh, start this uh, on this this on um, this month so December I think 11 um, in the Temiskwata and uh, also it will continue um, so after Christmas um, so like the the minors league is like a tournament so some tournaments and uh, it's uh, it's that we do um, it what we do with uh, the minors league also we have. Um, the Quebec Games on March that uh, we are really uh, we, we were really happy of that because there's the broom ball uh, the sports the broom ball uh, in the demonstration sports so um, this is a uh, good news for us uh, so we hope everything will go uh, all, will be all right uh, with uh, the COVID nineteen after Christmas too. <laughs> yeah, just gotta watch out for that Omicron variant or whatever. But worry about that another day. Yeah. Those are, those are some good answers, though. I like it. It's, uh, I'm yeah. glad everyone's playing. So, Yeah, and I mean, I, I, it's not official yet here in Saskatchewan, but like in Regina anyway, um, the SBA is working with the city of Regina. There's uh, some sort of a – they want to bring fun back to winter type thing in Regina, and we've got the Wascana Lake in the city of Regina, and they're talking about clearing off a bunch of ice and making a bunch of uh, uh, rinks where they want to have a, a learn to play and they've asked broomball to partake. So hopefully we can get some instructors out there and get some volunteers to come out to that and get a good turnout. We got our loaner kits and stuff. So hopefully we can maybe gain some players in the next little bit here. I believe it's going to be in February. They want to wait till the lake is froze good and they're going to clean off. And it'll be all outdoors on the lake. So it'll be interesting. It'll be, it'll be crazy. I think. Nice. Yeah. Anything to get us uh, out there, more visibility is always nice. So, yeah. Chad, you got any more questions for him? No, I'm I'm really happy that you guys put your names forward and stepped up. I'm glad that everyone elected two great individuals and keep up the great work and don't be shy to bring stuff forward if you if people do reach out to you. 
um, your voice will, it won't be silenced. It'll be heard. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us guys. I am so glad that you guys came on because now I know about deck ball and I'm going to like start a deck ball league out here in the summer or something. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Good. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Take Have care. Have a good night. Have a good one. Yeah, take care. Bye.